Well, 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 hello, we're back with Biss, and today we're going to be talking about stealth mocks, which is certainly something that people very, very much enjoy. I've done a few episodes of self mocks in the past, and I've always kind of given a bit of a description as to what a self mock is. I'll go into a little bit of detail as to what it is. I've had very in depth descriptions in past episodes, so be sure to uh, give that a give that a little search up on YouTube and uh, see if uh, you know if you want a bit of a brush up. You can uh, always check those out. But for the most part, uh, a self mock typically represents sort of like a mascot or sort of a mock that very much can like represent you, but in bionicle form. Uh, it's kind of just sort of that like kind of primary mock that you make that uh, you associate with yourself that you associate with your sort of online Lego persona um, or it can just be a mock that you really really like to some degree it it, it has many terms but uh, for the most part it's I think the best way to kind of sum it up is to some degree it's a, a bit of a form of self-expression you know whether that's quite literal whether that's very symbolic or eh, this guy's kind of cool you know whatever um, so we're going to talk a bit about various different self-mocks, different ways of building self-mocks, different people's self-mocks, and people who have built other people's self-mocks. So there's certainly a lot of ways to approach self-mocks in today's episode. So let's dive on into the first mock. It's by Gringat, and this is called Helios. So something that Gringat does, uh, and of course he's a, a dear friend, lovely person, um, he builds a whole bunch of different sort of like chibi versions of people's self-mocks. So Chibi, of course, just being like a smaller, cuter version. Uh, he's done a whole bunch, so by all means, check the links in the description, see all the different ones that he's made. They're really fun to look at, and uh, obviously if you know the source material, um, there's you know certainly a lot of really, really cool ones in there. But I wanted to focus specifically on this one here because this uh, was kind of a bit of a, a blast from the past for me. I remember the original mock that this was based off. This is, of course, Helios. That's the name of the character, but it was built by a builder named Sam H., and uh, Sam H used to be around on mock pages, but of course, mock pages no longer exists, unfortunately. So all the mocks that were on there are gone to the nether. Uh, but there are some pictures that I've, I've found online sort of thing of uh, the original mock. Uh, and it really is a glorious mock. Uh, and it's great to see how Gringat has, has translated it here. And so I kind of just wanted to talk about the general concept of something that was quite big in the past, certainly when mock pages were still around. Uh, and you don't see it too much these days, except for Gringat, who you know, still likes to build some of these these little chibi characters here, uh, is the idea of people building other people's self-mocks as just a bit of a sort of like community thing. Just kind of like the fun idea of like, oh, I really like your self-mock, or I really like you as a person. Like, here, I, I built you uh, in my own sort of style, you know, um, or your self-mock rather, you know. Uh, I love that idea. I think that was such a, a fun thing that people, you know, used to do very often in the past. And it's kind of a shame that it doesn't happen too much these days. Um, so I just kind of wanted to touch upon that concept of, you know, hey, by all means, if you like a character that someone's made, whether it's their self-mark or you know, other characters that they've built, there's nothing wrong with uh, giving it a bit of creative license, making your own version of it, because, you know, I remember when people would build my self-mark in the past, and, you know, sometimes people still do, uh, really, it's, it's, it's very humbling, it's very nice, so, um, you know, by all means, I think it's a really fun thing to do, and I think there's a great sense of community behind it as well, so... I think it's uh, something that you could definitely consider doing if you, you know, want to make some friends in the community or if you uh, have some friends in the community and you want to you know, show them a bit of love. So I like the philosophy behind this build in that sense, but let's talk about the actual build itself now. So Helios here has this really cool helmet. The original one did, and of course Gringat has uh, translated that here. So this is using that, that uh, weird kind of headpiece that came on some different Hero Factory sets, but it specifically came on uh, Black Phantom in that sort of silver color. And it was used as this kind of weird spider shooter bug thing that Black Phantom had. It was a cool piece. You know, it had a lot of different connection points to it. It's very similar to the Skull Spider piece that, of course, came in a lot of the Bionicle G2 sets. But it's got some nice connection points on the side. So adding some of those, once again, the ever-famous uh, Exoforce uh, robot bad guy arm pieces, as I like to call them. Uh, putting those on there to, to kind of like the little straps on the helmet or something and then kind of you're tying it around the front as well, all sorts of different things. It creates this brilliant looking helmet design that very nicely sort of slots over the top of a mask there, specifically, you know, Tahu's Howl mask there. Uh, really cool idea. You know, you don't see helmets that often on mocks. Uh, and I think that's certainly something that really made Helio stand out for me when I first saw him on mock pages and when I see him again now built by Gringat here is that one just the cool idea for a helmet but two that really makes this self mock really just stand out and have so much kind of like flair and personality to it i think personally some of the really cool self mocks or in general just some of the cooler mocks are the ones that do stuff like that that really kind of break boundaries or do stuff that no one else has done uh you know because that tahu mask is pretty popular you see it 
on a bunch of different mocks. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily, you know, grab you as much. Not that you can't use it or not that it's a boring mask to use or whatever, but to give it a helmet, to give it some extra flair like that really does make it shine. So uh, by all means, if you can think of something uh, like that on your mock, obviously that's, you know, easier said than done. But, uh, you know, if you can think of something that's a bit more outside the box, not typically been done before, uh, you know, it'll make your mock really shine, as it, as we see here for sure. Um, otherwise, I think it's just a fantastic rendition of, of the original character, just making it smaller and cuter, and, you know, by all means, it's a lot easier to build uh, someone's mock if you shrink it down in size, because, you know, you use less pieces to it, and sometimes it can be a bit more fun to build it in a, a smaller scale as well, so that's certainly something there. Um, but I, I quite like the little little foot design there, just using the, the, the smallest little Hero Factory um, shell pieces there, just as almost, almost kind of like a little hoof to some degree, but I also sort of see it as like a boot of sorts, you know. Could be used in multiple different ways there, but it's just a fun little foot design that works really well on a small character like this. So, uh, yeah, really, really love your work, good sir. Great to see you uh, revamping a really cool character and making it your own. It's really cool. Let's move on to another mock now. This is by Wombat Combat Pictures. Great name. Uh, and this is Noxus. So, of course, Noxus is the self-mark of uh, Wombat Combat Pictures, which is what I just said. But I'm sure many of you know him from his YouTube channel. There's, of course, a link in the description below. And by all means, check out that guy because he's uh, an old friend and, uh, um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a really cool guy. And he makes some fantastic videos and has, like, a lot of different, like, instructions and other Bionicle-related content. And, uh, you know, always, always, always uh, happy to promote other people doing really cool Bionicle stuff in the community. And, you know... Noxus deserves that love, so be sure to, you know, say hi or uh, head over to his channel, see what he's got going on. He's a, he's a cool dude. Anyway, let's talk about this mock. So I adore the use of the different cloth elements and capes all throughout this. Uh, some of the earlier versions of Noxus, which I'll, I'll, I'll throw some images in here as well, um, he's kind of, for the most part, I think the original version didn't, and there's a few other sort of takes where he doesn't have it, but for the most part, he's always had that sort of half-and-half half aesthetic, the sort of, you know, evil side and the good side, you know, combined into one, which is a really clever, cool concept, and it's great to see how it's evolved over time, and I love that how in this more modern interpretation of the of the character, he's introduced the cape elements, which I think really kind of accentuate that evil side, making it seem more uh, you know, badass and, and, well, you know, evil. Because, you know, you look at most bad guys in pop culture and across all sorts of forms of media, most of them have capes. A lot of them are in robes. A lot of them have, you know, black in their color scheme in some fashion, whether it's on armor or, or you know, robes or whatever. Um, so it's very fitting there, I think, for sure. And, again, I always think that cloth can really, you know, accent a character, really improve it in some fashion. So I think it's just a, a very nice choice that does elevate the mock and make it even more unique and different, especially giving it a hood. You don't really see too many hoods because Lego never really made any hoods. You know, to, to, to specifically look at all these different cape elements, to my knowledge, that hood piece is custom. It certainly looks it. He could have just got any sort of cloth piece from, you know, Star Wars Ultra Build sets or even some from Binocle and Hero Factory sets uh, and sort of folded it in a manner to make it look like a, a, a hood. You know, that's certainly something you could very easily do, but... I mean, just kind of the way it sort of rounds up at the top. It does look customized, but I could be wrong. Uh, but I think the actual cape that sort of folds over his shoulder and his back, I believe that is from the Sir Fangar uh, set, which is a set that I'm talking about a surprising amount if you've watched the sort of last, you know, 20, 30 bis episodes. It comes up a surprising amount. So it's a pretty cool set. A lot of really nice pieces in that one, that's for sure. And a really nice sort of tattered cape, which I think suits the aesthetic of this, of this mock uh, very, very well. And then it, there's a little kind of like waistcoat on the side there. Again, that could be customized, but I want to say that is from the Black Pearl Pirates of the Caribbean set, I think. I don't know. Um, it's a little hard to tell in this picture specifically. I'm sure I'm sure Mr. Wombat Combat Pictures will let me know. But uh, regardless, cool piece. I think it's nice. And I, I think it, um, uh, you know, suits the aesthetic well and, and just, just looks banging. It's really good. Uh, so love your work there. Uh, I also quite enjoy some of the other little sort of accessories that this mark has. You know, the awesome necklace, which sort of ties into to his story, which uh, Mr. Wombat Combat Pictures has various videos and places you can read his uh, very in-depth, very, very awesome story, which I also feature in, which is really good fun. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's a fun little aesthetic, and it's nice that it ties into sort of deeper backstory and lore, which, you know, a lot of people in the Bionicle community like to really go deep into into lore and storytelling. Not everyone does, but, you know, those who do, do a good job of it, that's for sure. 
Uh, he's also got a b- bunch of different weapons and things here, like the sort of larger uh, sort of dagger in the uh, shadow side hand there. But then he's got these smaller daggers there, which are just sort of minifigure swords, but they very much look like little kind of throwing knives of sorts. Um, and uh, that's awesome. I think it's a very fun aesthetic, and it looks so cool how he's sort of you know holding them in between his fingers there, and looks like he could just fling them out at you and and knife you really good. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Um, so awesome aesthetic, awesome looking uh, little accessories and things there. Uh, and also a really cool foot design too, just taking that original sort of smaller, um, like kind of toed foot, I guess, how it has the little bits at the front there where you could attach little toes to the, to the, to the foot. You saw some of those on like different hero, uh, yeah, yeah, later waves of Hero Factory and stuff. Um, even some of them were in Bionicle G2. They're a relatively common piece, I would argue, but it's nice how he's extended them even sort of further forward and just, uh, taken that, what, what would otherwise be a quite small piece and sort of branched it out even further just with little sort of, you know, slight subtle system um, additions there. It's uh, quite nice. It's quite nice indeed. But yeah, in terms of this being a self-mock, um, I think that that's certainly something that a lot of people quite quite commonly do uh, with with their Bionicle characters. They like to kind of do that sort of, like, um, shadow evil sort of infected, um, uh, sort of like fighting their own inner evils with characters. It's something that you know, if you've watched a lot of BIS episodes or you've just looked at a lot of Bionicle mocks, it does come up a fair bit. I mean, Takanuva is is pretty big with that in the Bionicle story itself. Um, so it, it's quite a common thing to see. And just because other people do it doesn't mean you can't do it. I, I personally think it's a really cool concept, you know. Um, so honestly, nothing wrong with doing it. And uh, great to see it on a self-mock like this. And great to see it done so well, especially that half-and-half half aesthetic thing, you know, very Two-Face from Batman sort of thing. Which, you know, is something we've seen on sets, is something we've seen from a lot of different stuff, but it's great to see it in a Bionicle and, again, see it done so very well. Um, one little subtle thing, and then we'll, then we'll move on to the next mock. Uh, you can kind of see on the head design of Noxus here that the eyes are actually different colours to fit with that half-and-half half design. Uh, instead of painting the mask, which he's done in some of the past versions of Noxus, um, he has kept the mask what appears to be exactly the same, just as it came out on Matoro. Uh, but the head design underneath is custom. Uh, so one eye is yellow, the other eye is black there, just to really continue that aesthetic in a very, very nice way. So very clever and very smart. Especially putting that hood over the top kind of masks the fact that the whole mask is silver and kind of makes it blend in a little bit more with that darker side there. So a nice clever way of doing that in a more sort of slightly purist fashion as well. That's uh, really, really clever. So love your work, good sir. Let's move on to the next mock now. This is built by Jafer, and this is Gamma Ray. So this is not actually Jafer's self-mark. This is the self-mark of Mr. Mitch Phillips. And uh, I believe this was built for a Secret Santa collab. And uh, yeah, he's just building the self-mark of his friend, because why not? You know, great idea. But I wanted to touch upon a couple concepts in this that I think are really cool. Uh, The first one is the awesome, really snazzy kind of waistcoat that he's got and the cool-looking boots that he has. To me, there's something very kind of almost sort of cyberpunky about that. It's very sort of futuristic kind of fashion you know those boots look like they'd i don't know maybe defy gravity or could do some sort of weird crazy you know science fictiony kind of thing um or you know they're armored or something i don't know and, and just the, the the way that the the waist really sort of flares out on the sides there there's something that just looks so i don't know interesting so unique so different so futuristic about it and yeah, it very much reminds me of that sort of cyberpunk aesthetic. And I love that. And that's really cool. You know, I, I think cyberpunk is certainly a, a sort of style that is really kind of up, uh, you know, be, become more prominent in this day and age, obviously because of the, the cyberpunk video game. But for other reasons, people just really like that aesthetic a lot these days. And uh, rightfully so. It's a really cool aesthetic. So I think if you can kind of capture elements of that in a Bionicle mock, do it because it's really, really cool. I did do a cyberpunk episode in the past. If, if that's intrigued you, go check that out. Uh, additionally, the head design, which in itself also looks quite cyberpunky, but he's got the really cool, like, uh, headphones almost, you know? There's something about that that, um, I know it makes it look like this guy could control, you know, sonic powers or sound or whatever, and maybe, like, weaponize it in some fashion, which is really cool. But also, I just like the fact that he has headphones on his head, because if you're building a self mock and you want to kind of personalize it to yourself what sort of stuff do you like to do? You know, obviously you like to build Lego, that's why we're here, but, you know, what other stuff from your personality do you like? What other sort of hobbies and things do you have that represent you in some fashion? Do you want to put your love of music into your self-mock by giving him headphones? Or maybe you want to build a little, you know, um, phone and some headphones that go up to his head or something so that, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm always on my phone, I'm always listening to music or like whatever. 
Or you could be like, I love cooking, so I'm going to make myself mock a chef and give him an apron and some, some, you know, baking ingredients or whatever, you know. Maybe you could do something really crazy and really interesting like that and show off different sides of your personality or the hobbies that you do. Or, you know, you could go a little deeper. You'd be like, ah, oh, I'm a really kind of happy-go-lucky kind of person, so maybe I could go for a really kind of happy color scheme on my mock or something, you know, my self-mock specifically, you know. Whatever. I don't know. If you can find little elements of yourself and put it into the mock, even if it's something as subtle as that, as just headphones on the on the head, do it. Because I think it's a really, really good idea, and I think uh, it certainly makes the mock more unique, and makes it more you, which is kind of the point of a self-mock, right? So, yeah, give it a go. Some other things that I like on this mock, the color scheme is really nice. I love how all the sort of more translucent blues and those glow in the dark blues work with the dark blue and the black on this. Just a very nice color scheme with multiple different colors, but they, they flow very nicely one into the other. Uh, additionally, the gun that he's holding there is really cool. There's something a little bit more retro about it. It's a little less cyberpunky, at least the way I'm looking at it. Uh, but I love all the different wires poking out of it, the, you know, the blue and the, the red uh, tubing there. It looks really cool. It does look like that sort of exposed wiring. Um, and again, yeah, it's a very subtle little detail, but it goes a long way. And uh, it just looks cool. It looks really cool. So I love seeing that little pop of extra color in that gun there because, uh, yeah, it makes it really sort of stand out, I reckon. Super cool. So fantastic little mock here. Let's move on to the next mock. This one here is by Badbot, and it is also called Bad Bot. Oh, those Bad Bot Studios, I should say, I suppose. But still, this is a, 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 an awesome little submitted mock that we've got here. And there's some stuff about it that really grabbed me when I saw it that I quite liked. So first off, I'm sure you can kind of notice from some of these images here that he does have light up eyes, which is really, really cool. Of course, he's just using the like power functions light up kit that you can buy. I mean, it comes in, I, th I think it does come in a couple Technic sets and a few other different things, but you can just, you know, just outright buy it as the set. I haven't seen it in stores for a long time, so I don't know if it's still available, the, the, the Power Functions light and motor kit that you could buy. But I'm sure you could very easily get it on you know, BrooklynCallLego.com or other different places like that. It's not super hard to come by. Um, it's not necessarily the cheapest set, but it's not that expensive too. I think in the past it was like 50 Australian dollars for me, which is, uh, if my maths is correct, that's probably about like 75, 80 American dollar redos. I don't know. Um, still, uh, you know, it's really, really fun to play around with the, the lights and the motors and stuff, and it's, it's something I've done in the past with various system mocks and things. It's, it's great fun to do. Uh, and, uh, of course, you don't always have to buy the official LEGO lighting. You can go out and buy some LED lights, or there's different companies that exist out there that make lighting specifically for LEGO stuff. So um, definitely something to look into. And then you can get really cool stuff like this where the eyes light up, or, you know, you could light up other parts of the mock as well. It's uh, just really cool to see. But I love specifically how uh, he hasn't been that shy of, like, hiding the box that uh, has the batteries in it that powers the lights. I like the fact that in some of these images he's like sitting on that box or it's just kind of resting by his side and stuff like that. It kind of becomes a sort of like personality point to the character to a degree. Like in order, like I don't know, that maybe that box is the power source for this specific robot and he has to kind of carry it around with him. You know, maybe he could like swing it around as a weapon or like that. He likes to sit on it occasionally or it's a nice pillow for him to sleep on. I don't know, you know. I, I think that's just a, a fun little sort of personality quirk. Uh, that kind of fits with this unique character in that sense. I quite like it. It does also remind me of the, um, I believe it was called the Proto Saber from uh, Star Wars Legends, where some of the early lightsaber concepts were um, uh, powered by like a sort of separate box. And it was kind of a wire that connected to the lightsaber itself so that, you know, back in the day, that's how they powered it because the technology was older versus where Star Wars was set in the movies and stuff, you know. Of course, this isn't canon anymore, but it's still a really cool idea kind of reminds me of um of that here and i don't know i think it's a really clever idea and sure you could put that box on the back or something but that would be a bit bulky it might even be a bit too heavy for the character to hold so i really like how he's kind of dealt with that and just made it a part of the characteristics on this character i think it's just really clever it's really cool the um hand design itself is also quite nice very similar to the um kind of axon hands uh, but a bit sort of skinnier and slimmer with fewer fingers and works really well uh, and i love that he's kind of holding that zemosphere uh, and there's, there's other kind of little orange bits too, so it kind of looks like a bit of a weapon. Kind of reminds me of Nuparu from the old Bionicle game, uh, how he how they kind of adapted his weapon to be this sort of interesting kind of power gauntlet thing that kind of exploded out with kind of like these implosion weapons of sorts. It's really, really cool. I did enjoy that game. Um, so it's kind of cool to see a somewhat similar arm design there uh, for the sort of weapon on this character. It's really cool. But yeah, overall, really sort of like slim and agile looking character that does have a surprising amount of personality in it. So really nice work, good sir. Let's move on now to the next mock. 
This one here is Adam, and it's built by Nick. So, uh, color scheme wise, pretty much just you know black with the little hints of blue, but that's more just from the pins on, uh, on the inside of it. I don't think it's a deliberate choice there per se. Uh, but then the head design is this really sort of uh, funky out there uh, sort of half and half design. It's uh, quite freaky and cool. I like it a lot. It, uh, it I think it's a really interesting aesthetic because obviously just pure black there. You know, only those sort of two kind of three colors on this mark, kind of four depending on how you look at it. But I think there's something really nice in that simplicity, and it really does make that head design stand out because it is so vastly different from the just pure sort of sea of black on this mark. Uh, you know, I feel like it's a, to some degree a bit of a kind of common trope to, you know, really kind of strip back colors and just showcase uh, a very sort of wild mask that a character is wearing. And I really like that idea. I think it's really creative and clever. So... I love the idea of doing that with a mark, you know, do you want to put a lot of sort of expression or color or kind of craziness in one specific part of the body and then the rest of it is just one sort of monotonous color like that. We, I mean, we often talk about, you know, oh, that's a cool color scheme, you know, white looks really nice with red or, you know, black kind of goes with every color or, I don't know, silver and blue, that's kind of interesting, you know. But I also like the idea of playing with colors with like this to, to make something really stand out by stripping back color elsewhere or introducing a bunch more color in another part to communicate something or to make something stand out or just to give it a really kind of crazy, wild, interesting look. Um, so I think that in itself is really cool and just uh, certainly something you could do as well just to kind of play around with character and play around with color at the same time. But yeah, I love the idea of using that thin shoulder piece from some of the Star Wars Ultra Build sets as a mask. There's something really... I don't know, it kind of looks like some sort of... I don't even know, it just looks cool. <laughs> and sometimes that's all that matters. Sometimes cool is all you need. Some of the other stuff on this monk that's pretty cool, the weapon. Um, this weird, almost sort of like question mark shape that it has is nice. You, you can really see how he'd probably use it. You know, the curved bit maybe being a handle or also being like a hook. Uh, and just how he would maybe, you know, fight with it or how he'd use it to maybe like climb stuff. I don't know, it's uh, just out there and different. So going for really kind of weird curvy shapes on weapons is kind of an underrated cool idea, I reckon. I also like the torso design using the fist piece that came on, you know, different Glatorian or Hero Factory sets and stuff and implementing that into the torso because it does have, you know, some interesting lines and sort of shaping to it. It does give it this almost sort of, I don't know, just sort of slight curve to the torso. I think it looks quite nice. Uh, and it's just an interesting way of using that hand piece, which can be a little bit more difficult to use because it is so obviously a, a, a fist. You can kind of only really use it as a fist sometimes. Uh, but it's nice to see it being used uh, in a different way there, just to, to really make it stand out, really make it a bit more prominent. I think it's really cool. But uh, yeah, overall, nice looking mock, really cool color scheme. Love your work. And finally, the last mock we're going to talk about today is Jafer by Jafer. So this is, of course, Jafer's self mock. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool. It was a pretty snazzy looking mock. What do I like about it? Well, I thoroughly enjoy the textures on this mock, how the whites look like this sort of... Uh, protective armor that's very sort of sleek and smooth, but the underneath of this mock is all this awesome, uh, greebled, very detailed mechanical looking textures. The torso itself is beautiful with all the different like little tiny sort of like almost like pistons and different things that sort of flow through it. And it just has this great looking robotic texture to it. Um, and kind of the bulk of that is all system pieces, really. There's actually not a lot of Technic in there. Um, some bits there is. You know, more like some of the support areas on like the arms and the legs and stuff. And then it kind of just flows out into little like mixel joints and stuff, which can really easily integrate with systems. So really nice way to actually use a fairly, fairly minimal Bionicle or Hero Factory kind of setup here. It's actually quite system heavy, this mock, which is really nice to see. Um, and, you know, it makes sense because like, hey, you know, sometimes it's nice to go out, buy a new set, come home, look at all the brand new pieces and get inspired by those new pieces. And of course, now with... Um, with construction in general, there's just no new sets. So to play around with more, you know, more system in your mocks, you at least can get really inspired by new stuff, new colors, new pieces, new molds, all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, and definitely not a bad idea to play around with your, you know, mixel joints, your um, system pieces that work really well with uh, Hero Factory stuff, just to kind of branch out a bit more so that you can use new pieces and really get inspired by new stuff. Uh, so I think Jafer's self mock here is a great example of that and something you could certainly study to, uh, to, to really get a few ideas for that so that you can play with system pieces. I also love seeing the like, uh, sort of larger wheel pieces on the sort of sides of the knee and you can see that there's a white rubber band linking them. It's cool because it kind of really gives you this impression of how that would like 
turn and move as his knee sort of bends and moves or as he like runs or moves or whatever. Uh, I think it's just a really nice addition. And, and there's something, again, very you know, mechanical about that that just looks very aesthetically pleasing. The swords are really cool too, using those Gorast wing pieces. They just, I don't know, they work pretty well as weapons, you know. Uh, and it's kind of a bit different too, you know. You kind of don't see those pieces being used all that often and, and even to see them being used as, as weapons is not super common. Uh, and I think it fits the color scheme of the mock and the overall look of the mock really well. So that's awesome in itself. And then the final little detail is the head design, you know, using the Nuva shoulder there in white as the head and putting the eyes in the little gaps nat that, you know, are naturally in that piece there. It's cool. It's really cool. And I feel like that head design is so synonymous with Jafer because, I mean, it is his, you know, profile picture on all his social media for the most part. And uh, additionally, it's so... I don't know, it's just a really nice looking design and, you know, I, I just really associate it very strongly with Jafer. So, you know, by all means, if you can come up with a really unique head design, you know, people might really associate you with that, especially if you, you know, if that's something you want, if you want that to be the kind of branding, quote unquote, for your, uh, you know, your your binocle social media accounts and things, you know, something to consider. But yeah, overall, fantastic looking mock. Jafer sure does know what he's doing. Anyway, that's it for this self-mock themed episode. Hope you enjoyed and hopefully it was a, a good study of self-mock so you could get a few ideas and see what other people have done and hopefully we've inspired you just a little bit or a lot bit. Who knows? Uh, if you want to see some of the other mocks that these builders have made, check the links in the description. You can see all the different things that they've built. There's links to all their stuff there. Additionally, there's links to all my stuff, my social media, my stuff, my going-ons in the, the description below. So be sure to check that out if you want to see some of the stuff that I'm doing, some of the mocks that I'm posting, some of the things that I've got going on. That's the place to look. And finally, as well, uh, in the description is uh, uh, the, well, well, my Patreon is also there. So if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, that's the place to do so. You can get some bonus content through there, whether that's my private Discord server, where you can have the chitty chats with me. Uh, or, you know, some of my uh, additional bonus you know, videos like podcasts and things. That's in the, the other place to check that out. And uh, finally, uh, although I said finally in the last point, this is the real finally. Now, uh, if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show, you can do so through the submission email that's on your screen right now, or it's in the description below. So put that in an email, send me some images, send me some info, whatever you really want to put on the email, whatever is welcome. Uh, and I'll do my best to feature it in a future episode of the show. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you were a little bit inspired, and I hope you have a good day. Happy building and bye for now.